What's up friends? Welcome to the Scrap Trawlers channel where we do EDH on a budget. Today we're bringing you another deck tech. As always, our budget for this deck is $50 or less, excluding the commander and basic lands. For this episode, we're burning it all down with one of the new legends from Modern Horizons 2. It's Piru the Volatile. We're going back to basics here with Piru, an 8 mana Elder Dragon. It even has the upkeep tax like the old dragons do. Normally that's a downside, but when Piru dies, it deals 7 damage to each non-legendary creature. What's more, it has lifelink, so every creature we hit gains us 7 life. So how are we going to win the game? Since Piru is our finisher and costs a whopping 8 mana, we need a lot of ramp to get them out. Along the way we can deploy some creatures that have benefits when they take damage, making them great blockers. We'll also have more creatures and spells that care about other creatures dying and taking damage. Once we have enough mana, we'll hit the big red button and deploy Piru for the grand finale. For creatures that like taking damage, we have Mog Fanatic, Spiteful Sliver, Boros Reckoner, Spite Mare, and True Fire Captain, which usually function as one-shot effects to dish out damage. We also have High Priest of Penance and Silver-clad Ferocidons, which can double as removal. Of course, we're running Stuffy Doll and Andy's favorite, Brash Taunter, which can be hit multiple times. Bellowing Aegisaur can pump up our creatures when they take damage if they survive. And Coal Holler Swine is a big pig that can send out a lot of damage. For cards that want to hit creatures, we have Plague Splitter, Pestilence, and Pestilence Demon, which can periodically do one damage to every creature on the board. We also have Kazarov, Sengir Pureblood, which can become a huge flying threat with all of our damage dealing spells and abilities. For other win conditions, we have Viscopa Guild Mage, Defiant Bloodlord, and Sanguine Bond, which can make our opponents lose life whenever we gain life. If we're dealing 7 damage to each non-legendary creature, that's probably game over with a full board. We also have Arc Bond and Shriveling Rot to sneak in damage. If the game doesn't end immediately, we can cast Command the Dreadhorde to bring back all of the creatures in the graveyards. We'll gain so much life that the downside of this spell won't matter. Piru costs 2 red red, white white, black black. So we're playing 40 lands and 14 ramp spells to make sure we can cast Piru at least once during the game. We have the usual suspects of Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Burnished Heart, Solemn Simulacrum, and other friends. We're also running Mana Geyser as a way to fuel some of our X spells, Geode Golem to get us a free Piru, and Netherborn Altar to skirt around Piru's commander tax. For draw spells, we have Underworld Connections, Read the Bones, Painful Truths, Secret Rendezvous, and Faithless Looting, which are inexpensive ways to keep our deck going. We also have Commune with Lava and Damnable Pact, which act as mana sinks, with the latter being a potential kill spell for our opponents. We're also playing Diabolic Tutor to find any of the pieces we need, and a new spell from C21 in Stinging Study. This will let us draw 8 cards at instant speed. While we want our creatures to take damage, sometimes we don't want them to die. For this, we have Boros Charm and Lena Selfless Champion to grant indestructible to our creatures, and Gerard Weatherlight Hero to save all of our creatures and artifacts that may die when we blow up the world. Since we're dealing so much damage, sometimes to ourselves, we also have ways to gain some of that life back. Fire Song and Sunspeaker and Radiant Scroll Wielder give our instants and sorceries lifelink. Deafening Clarion can either deal more damage or give our creatures lifelink, and Bright Flame can do both. Mardu is one of the best color combinations for removal. As a result, some of those options are very expensive. So we're including some standard budget options like Utter End, Despark, Chaos Warp, and Ablation to remove any problematic permanent. Rakdos Charm and Mortify offer additional flexibility, and Blasphemous Act could win us the game under the right conditions. Alright friends, that is our budget Piru the Volatile deck. Thank you for watching. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. The link for the full deck list on Architect is in the notes below, so follow that link to take the deck for a spin in playtest mode. 
You'll also find the links down there to follow us on Twitter and Discord. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to catch us streaming at twitch.tv slash every Sunday at 7.30pm Central. Take care everyone.